Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another exciting Minecraft discussion. Uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am very, very happy to be here this morning on this snowy, gorgeous day. And it's like score. I got the whole house to myself today, this little Giovanni, a golden retriever and me with a fire going. So I plan to be incredibly in tune with what we're talking about, <clears throat> inspired, creative, and just loving life on this day. So let's get going about embracing imperfection. Great topic here today. You know, and I, I got to first start, but I have to uh, do a shout out to my inspiration for the day, which is Marina Harris, who writes for Psychology Today. And there's an article in there that's about um, kind of superpowers we don't know we have. And actually, one of them, she talks about being imperfection. And I, it's interesting because I was, my head's kind of here anyway. And I think that oftentimes um, we think of it with men folk in particular, I think with, you know, having this armor up and, you know, in 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 vulnerability being, um, you know, being mean that we're strong and, and tough and we can endure anything. And it's also the women folk because we're all people and we're all that armor is all there. You know, we put that armor up to protect us from a variety of, negative emotions, especially rejection, right? Also embarrassment, humiliation, um, just disapproval and people, that, you know, not liking us, not fitting in and not, you know, belonging is different. We talked about that. Um, but really, uh, this isn't, it's interesting because we, we, we most, many of us, I'd probably say, hesitate to say all of us because that's so polarized, but the high majority of us have at least experienced, you know, suiting up in this armor to protect the imp the imperfection that's underneath, you know, when ironically, when we drop the ar armor and let our imperfection be seen, we're more relatable to other people. <clears throat> people like us better. Not that we're looking for the approval of that because that's inauthentic. The authentic part is, is having the courage to really brave through, drop the armor and realize we're not perfect and just, you know, share your story, share your story of imperfection. I'm not talking about go out in the world and overshare. I'm talking about just being real. Oh yeah. I've experienced that too. Oh yeah. That was horribly painful. Da, 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 da. Just to not, to not even pretend that we're perfect when everyone knows that we're not. It just, it's a, it's an immediate letting out, letting the air out of the balloon kind of feeling. It's a relief when we, when we adjust that bar to do our best rather than having it at perfect. And Marina kind of says this in the beginning. She says, in, in vulnerability is a classic superpower, but in real life, pretending to have it tends to backfire. I can't agree more. I mean, we all know, you know we've, we've all bumped into those people that are just, you know, got the bravado going on and, and like to have it all down. And people don't like people like that. Why? Because we can't relate to them. It, it's, they come off as if they're better than us. And I don't think anybody likes the feeling of somebody else elevating at our expense. People just plain and simply don't like that. And then she says, instead, those who make mistakes and let others know it are better liked and often more successful. You know, and this has me thinking about, as, as many of you know, I, I have a morning routine and I listen to, I also branch out into new people, though I definitely have like a cluster of people that I listen to frequently, Oprah being one, Wayne Dyer being another, Brene Brown being another. And all three of those people, the, the, the top three that I listen to the most, are very, very open about their lives, the mistakes they've made, things that have happened to them, that, um, you know, violations and all kinds of things, how they braved and, you know, were courageous and, 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 you know, sort of walked through the mud, as we say. And that those top, those three people I just named are extremely well known, and and that's because it's it, they have a following because people can relate to them. They're honest about mistakes. They're honest about what things have happened. It's it's when we put that armor up that people actually back up because it's it's just like okay, go ahead and stay locked up in in your in your um, you know facade of having it all together. I don't understand you or know you or want to know you. That's really what we're saying when we come up against armor. And another thing it does when we armor up is it blocks connection, which is a basic human need. I don't care how introverted or extroverted you are, wherever you land on the spectrum with that, 
if no matter who you are, we are wired for connection. And perfectionism gets in the way of connection when we when we when we suit up in that armor and sort of um, not wanting to engage in our own authentic vulnerability. Vulnerability, you know, meaning to be able to have the strength and courage to expose ourselves or share our real story. You know, um, also, I also Brene Brown talks about the definition actually being almost the same as courage, actually. Courage, coming from the Latin word cur, meaning heart, uh, she says, is to share, to share our story just from straight from the heart, just blah, share our story without knowing what the outcome is going to be. Courage, also showing up and, and to do whatever interaction without knowing what the outcome will be. And it's ironically or interestingly, I've been using that word too much, I guess. It is ironic, though. Ironic means whenever there's an element of surprise. So I guess that's spot on accurate, actually. Um, with when we're talking about vulnerability and courage, the definition being super similar, when we do drop the armor, the connection is, so, is, is there again and it's enhanced and it's embraced and it's real and it's authentic. Why? Because people can relate to you when you let your humanness show. It's really that simple. So uh, Marina uh, gets into this as well. I've been listening. Brene Brown does this a, a lot. So I guess I have this in my head. Um, but then Marina is sort of supporting this because she says connection has always been a basic human need. To achieve it, many people assume they need to put their best self forward, never make mistakes or blunders, and always know the right thing to say. This pressure can lead to stress as people uh, second-guess their presentation, their actions, and their words. Research, however, suggests that such effort may not be worth it. That is what we're talking about. So also think about the person who's got that facade going at a work event or wherever out in the world. That stuff is exhausting. It's exhausting to put up a facade, never mind try to maintain that stuff. And the, again, the thing is, it makes everybody around you uncomfortable because they just don't, they can't see who's in there. You know, it's like trying to look through a really dirty windshield or something like what's coming. I don't know. I can't tell sort of thing. Marina uh, goes on to talk about some research with this, which is interesting. And I don't doubt it for one second, just based on just my own narrow life experiences and what I've seen on, you know, different people talking on, on TV or just out in the world and, and whatever. She says, in classic studies on what came to be called the pratfall effect, social psychologist Elliot Aronson showed that people who, people who demonstrated high levels of skill in trivia challenges, but also committed minor blunders, like let's say spilling coffee on themselves, were rated more likable by others and similarly skilled people who made no such stumbles. I think probably many of you can relate to this. I know I can. I can't come up with examples in my head because there's, there's just been so many. I'm thinking like on, on, I don't actually watch a lot of television, but some things on TV and also just out in the world. Cause I do, I do also see a lot of presentations, you know, high rollers out there speaking on things and we'll be, and when they say like, whoops, and they'll dust off their, you know, their suit jacket or something because they had little link, a little, you know, blueberry muffin there. That, that just to me says human, you know, just, just human and, and makes them just more relatable. It's, it brings, I guess it feels like it brings us to that place of in the, when you, you know, when you come down to it, we all put our shoes on in the morning. We all put pants or dress skirt, whatever on the morning. We're really all just energy walking around wearing different outfits. Nobody's above anybody. And when people are honest about their coffee stains that they have on their boob in the morning, to me, that just, it's like, yeah, we're all in the same club. We're all connected. That to me, that's what that does. Um, so Marina goes on to say that this research shows that it's not only okay to be fallible, it can actually benefit us. Perfection is not something that other people find endearing. Oh my God, that's so true. Being vulnerable is. When we see that others have flaws, we feel that we understand them better and can connect with them. It was basically what we were just saying. And uh, it's actually funny because I know if she's listening to this, she'll laugh too. I have a good friend at Champlain and she and I go to lunch every couple of weeks and we both love to eat. We just like right out there with it. We both, we're both foodies. 
And because of that, and we're also, we also get really excited when we have lunch together. So we're talking and we're up and down. We often go to a cafeteria on campus. And so because I think we're just so excited about life and food and being together, we constantly spill stuff. And she just spilled something on her boob this week. And I loved how she just, and it's frequent. It's frequent for me too. For me, it's usually mustard, which te- I realize mustard stains worse than red wine. I don't know what it is, but mustard just, and it te- especially for women people, it seems to me because it's like this little shelf underneath the chin, kind of like a baby has that, the bibs with the little catch-all things. I think we need those. Um, <clears throat> but my friend was just so excited about whatever she was doing and eating and it landed right on her boob. And she's just like, oh, okay. And just grabs a napkin, wipes it off, kind of dab, 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 licks the end and dab, dab, dab. I love that. She And I'm like, I'm constantly smelling stuff on me. In fact, my husband, I went to buy a, a white, he was with me. I went to buy like a white top or something. And he looked at me like, really? That you wear that once and then that's over, you know, because you're constantly smelling stuff. But the point is being together with her, we're so comfortable. <clears throat> it's just human. People spill stuff on their boobs and it's okay. You know, and sort of the reverse of that very comfortable, um, you know, vulnerable situation, in, imperfect situation, the opposite to say, instead of being with my my very uh, good friend and colleague, and I, if at a Champlain, we're all very real. I honestly, I can't say all because that's in everybody's word, but you know, it's a great place with great vibes and people are just open and and are willing to be vulnerable. I, I just, I don't think I could work in a place that wasn't honestly, because if I picture being surrounded in a bunch of power suits, where if you spilled something on your boob, you had to kind of you know, sheepishly duck into a women's room and pretend like it didn't happen and then take out your little tied stick and hurry up and get the stain out before anybody noticed. I, that, that would, that just, the very thought of that is exhausting. I'd rather give it a chuckle, say, <clears throat> you know, whoops, looks like I dropped something on my boob and then, you know, have a, have, again, have a few chuckles and then go on with my day. Much more, much more comfortable, more real, more human, and a little funny. And then I like how Marina wraps up this little bit that she does in Imperfection. She says, Marina Harris, this is from Psychology Today. She says that in your own life, this and other research suggests it's important not to get wrapped up in what you think will make you likable because you're probably wrong about it. Sometimes, in fact, the things we dislike the most about ourselves are the most endearing to others. It works both both ways. Sometimes what we like about ourselves isn't necessarily a quality others appreciate. Instead of acting in a way that you think increases your appeal, drop the armor, be your genuine self, and let people discover what they like most about you. I love it. Okay. Let Embrace your imperfection. Let everybody see exactly, exactly who you are. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, imperfect, very real day. Thank you.